let's go to book of Acts chapter 28 verses 2 and 3. And the natives showed us unusual kindness for they kindled a fire and made us welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. And verse four, I'm gonna skip verse four, I'm gonna do verse five. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. I want to speak in preparing us to go home. I know a lot of us and, and uh, Daniel is going to share also right after me, but my message is not going to be necessarily for right now. I think a lot of right now has been received and more will be received today. I do want to answer some of the most common questions that people have and also prepare us of what to do when we go home. And if you are titling this short or this message, just, just name it, building a fire pit in my house. Building a fire pit in my house. I'm gonna have three points. I'm a three point guy, I'm a pastor. And so just, this is the way I rock and stuff. So, and uh, just the way I do. If you're writing notes down, I want you to write this down. Your ability to have the fire of God is you will live in the fire of God to the extent of your ability to overcome excuses of the flesh. You will walk in the fire of God in accordance to your ability to overcome excuses. And brother, if you can bring the chair as well, I just really, I just, that Leon thing hit me right now. And so... I always like to jump off, but after his testimony today, I am not jumping ever again. So, and I hear that you have to hold the chair for me. Hold it, yeah, because if I slip, it's not going to be good. The, the challenge that many people have is this. They think that to live consistently with God's fire is a personality trait or a gift. Or you have to be special, or you have to be elite, or you have to be anointed. But in reality, if you track every man or woman of God that is walking consistently and burning for God, you will see one common thing. It's not a personality trait. It's not that they're better than you. It's just they are better at beating excuses. The Bible says that Paul survived a storm, a shipwreck, and it was raining and he was building fire if this would have been me I would have been rebuilding my ship I would have been getting uber if this would be me I would be asking God why did he allow the storm I would be asking God why did he not deliver me from the storm as he did with Moses See, the first excuse is the storm. Well, if I can't burn for God. Why? Because God didn't heal my mom from cancer. The reason why I'm not on fire for God is because God didn't heal my eyes. My child still has autism. So God is not going to get all of my passion. I remember when that was the hindrance to burning for God. Look at my eyes. I was born. It's a, it's a birth defect. It's the factory defect. And I had a problem with God. I said, God, if you truly love me, you will heal me. And if you will heal me, I will serve you. But see, sometimes God delivers you from a storm. Sometimes he delivers you through it. He split, he split the Red Sea for Moses. He didn't split it for Paul. Never judge somebody for whom God didn't split the Red Sea thinking because they don't have enough faith. Just because God caused you to float on pieces and hold on to your broken, shattered life on pieces, it does not mean you have less faith. In fact, you have more faith than Moses. The God I serve is able to deliver me from this furnace of fire, but if he doesn't, 
let it be known to you, O Nebuchadnezzar, to your gods I will not bow, and your idols I will not serve. What does that mean? That means I'm going to burn on fire for God, even if God does not meet my expectations. Why? I trust him to exceed my expectations. I'm not going to be Isaiah, but if you can lift my microphone just a little bit. Yeah, give me a different microphone. I preached this morning, so just give me just a little bit more juice, yeah. If you don't overcome the excuse, every single man and woman of God will have an unanswered prayer that will stand at the crossroad between you burning for God. Don't ever think none of us in this room have something we're still believing God for. Everyone, including Daniel, myself, has something that right now that is not answered and we're standing in a gap for. What we do with that is we step over that. We don't trip over it. If you trip over it, the devil will steal your fire. And you will use what God has not done as an excuse. And the devil will steal what he's planning to do in your future. Amen. The second excuse that I see is the excuse of the broken ship. Broken ship is the broken marriage. It's, the, it's what the storm broke that carried you before and it was supposed to get you from point A to point B. And that which carried you broke. You prayed for it. You fasted for it, you sowed a seed for it, you named it, claimed it, blabbed it, grabbed it and you walked seven times around it and made it the shout and you were anointed with oil but the ship did not survive. Marriage did not survive that storm. Maybe business did not survive that storm. Maybe certain parts of your life did not survive that storm. And what many times we would do is this is the second offense. I can't burn for God. Why? Because God broke my ship. He didn't. The devil did. Being angry at God for taking your ship is wrong. Because God didn't take your ship. COVID did. Blame the Democrats, not God. Your husband was an alcoholic, not God. It's drugs that took your son, not God. Well, he died at 45. Yeah, he smoked 40 years of his life. It was cigarettes that took his life, not God. We blame God for everything that's bad. Give ourselves credit for everything that's good and devil is always undetected. Do we have a microphone? This microphone? So I want to change all of that and I want to say the devil is guilty. God is not guilty. And you and I are not to be glorified. Amen. The second excuse that I overcome and this excuse is common is when something doesn't survive. It's when sometimes a relationship doesn't survive and somebody doesn't make it to your next season. When maybe a particular business did not survive and didn't make it to your next season and you have to flow it on pieces. There are some of you in this room. You literally came on this conference by putting everything on the credit card and you came to here on pieces of a broken life and a broken ship. And there you are hearing about fire and you're like, you don't know my life. Oh no, I know your excuses. Because we are, unlike the Hollywood stars who tell us we were in this together, just a just bunch of lies, we actually are under the same problem, all of us, of a shipwreck and a storm. But I'm going to tell you the third excuse that always got me. And that's the rain. The rain is my flesh. The Bible says, walk in the Holy Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But this is how I read it. Don't fulfill the lust of the flesh so you can walk in the Holy Spirit. Meaning, once it stops raining, you know how hard it is to build a fire in the rain? 
it's impossible, it's counterproductive because you're building it, rain kills it. You know how hard it is to build a serious relationship with God when you're still battling with something? Can, let's, can, can we be honest? Yeah, I know we manifested, puke, threw up and everything, but then you go home and the same thing happens again. And you take two steps backwards and three steps back, or two steps forwards, three steps backwards. And then the devil comes to you and he says this, wait for the rain to stop and then build fire. Wait when you get delivered, then start fasting. Wait when you get finally delivered and then get committed to your Bible reading. Wait until all the voices stop and then you join the church consistently. Paul built fire when it was raining. Build a fire when it's raining. Even if you're struggling with smoking, still read your Bible. But you don't understand, I keep falling into pornography. Keep falling out of that pornography and still pray and still fast. Build the fire when it's raining in your life. When I was addicted to pornography, at the age of 13 till about 16, I was already in youth ministry. One of the greatest advice that my pastor gave me after he prayed for me and he did all this stuff and it was this. He said, listen, repent and keep serving God. And I said, but I am a, a pervert. He said, God knows that I know that everything's gonna be okay. I felt so horrible. Honestly, if I would not learn how not to wait for the rain to stop, but keep building that flame, I would have never been delivered from that thing. Many of you, you're postponing your fire because you're waiting for God to change weather. I want to challenge you and provoke you today. Remove every condemnation. God doesn't just wait for you to come to him when you get your life cleaned up. By the way, you can't clean a dirty window with a dirty rag. Come to God, he cleans you up and only then you can live a holy life. If you make a mess, come to God again. Come to God again. Come to God again. Come to God again. How many times? Seven times 70 every day. But still come to God. But still come to God. Amen. Amen. I think the speakers would be better for me here. The second thing I want you to write down. A fire is kindled by somebody, but it will only burn continuously by the bundle of your sticks. Have you noticed the Bible says that natives kindled the fire, but it was Paul who put the sticks on it. This is huge. A conference is the natives. It quickens it. But the conference doesn't keep it. Deliverance starts the fire. Deliverance doesn't keep the fire. That's why many of you keep going to deliverance because you're not building a fire pit in your life. Deliverance cannot keep your fire because that means you have to keep manifesting every day. Natives started the fire but the Bible says Paul gathered a bundle of sticks and he put them on the fire. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12 it says, And the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood and on it every morning and lay burnt offering in order on it. And he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings. If your encounter with God does not lead you to a changed lifestyle, it will lead you to apostasy. Now I understand it's a heavy statement. I'm going to back it up with scripture. Two souls. One soul is going to Ramah to kill David. Another soul is going to Damascus to kill Christians. Both encounter God. One gets naked prophesying, the other one goes blind falling off the horse. One changes his circle of friends, changes his habits and becomes an apostle. Another one feels remorse. It lasts for three to five days, 
goes back to the same habits and becomes an apostate. Encounters don't change people. They trigger a change. They initiate a change. They spark a fire. They don't keep it. Transformation cannot happen through a conference. A spark can happen in a conference. Deliverance creates the spark. But you have to put a bundle of your own sticks on Monday morning, on Tuesday morning, on Wednesday morning, on Thursday morning, on Friday morning, on Saturday morning, on Saturday night. And then the fire will burn continuously on your altar. Somebody say fire. Now let me offer to you three sticks that I believe every Christian needs to put on their fire every regularly three sticks the significance of these three sticks is this you have three main enemies that attack you your spiritual growth every day and I'm not talking about the world or demons right now I'm talking about greed pride and lust these three enemies attacked Adam Eve they attack Jesus and they will attack you this is going to be your number once you get delivered these things don't leave necessarily they will be constantly harassing your spiritual journey with God God gives us three weapons that counteract these three things and I would call them three logs prayer defeats pride fasting defeats lust and giving defeats greed the Bible says a threefold cord is not easily broken. Bring these three things together. Something begins to happen. You add one bundle stick of prayer, you will defeat pride. Another bundle of stick of fasting, you will defeat carnal appetites called lust. But if you don't stop there and you add one more stick, of fasting or one more stick of giving it will begin to crumble greed now these three things are boring they're not forgive me for the word sexy they don't get views they're not clickbait but these three things are the logs on your fire you cannot get continuous burning through impartation. You can only get continuous burning through intentional, aggressive, consistent, habitual momentum of changing your habits. Not expecting a lot of amens and so just, just receive. Number one is prayer. If you don't pray, you stray, period. Jesus changed Peter's name from Simon to Peter. Right before his crucifixion, Jesus called Peter Simon twice. He says, Simon, Simon, tonight you'll betray me. Why? Because when Peter fell asleep, instead of he should have been praying with Jesus, he resurrected the past Jesus himself delivered him from. Prayerlessness will always resurrect your old appetites, period. You're like, God killed it on a cross. Yeah, but he gave you the power of resurrection. It's called prayerlessness. Through prayerlessness, we wake up Simon, the very Simon Jesus delivered us from. How did Peter, he slept when he's supposed to be praying and the Bible says Peter then finds himself warming himself at the wrong fire. Because prayerlessness always leads you to the wrong fire. You will need a nightclub. You will need Jack Daniels. You will need tequila. You will need something to constantly substitute the emptiness that you have because prayer brings fire. Put a log of prayer. I'm not talking about prayer driving through the red light and Lord, make sure I don't get a ticket. I'm not talking about prayer where you've touched everybody and said, Lord, just cleanse me or you're praying for food. Not that kind of a prayer. Not a drive through prayer, but a prayer where you give time, quality time to God. When I was a young man, I remember a one teaching from one man of God that changed my life. And he said, any minute after 10 p.m. that you spend with anybody is the minute you are taken away from Jesus next morning. 
And when I was in high school, I made a decision, I will go to sleep at 10 o'clock so that I can wake up early before going to school to spend quality time with Jesus. That was 15 years before anybody watched more than 15 to 17 views on my YouTube videos. Nobody saw that. But I learned one very important secret. You will either live in a secret place or in a secret sin. You can't live in both. You want to be delivered from secret sin? Live in secret place. Because everybody in here is hiding something. Somebody is hiding prayer and somebody is hiding prayerlessness. But we're hiding something. And it's a matter of few years. And every Aiken's forbidden hidden stuff will be exposed. And what Rahab hid was also exposed. And it changed her family tree because of what she was hiding. What are you hiding today? Begin to hide prayer. Begin to hide prayer. Begin to make a discipline of prayer. But I, I, I don't feel like praying pray anyway demons are not allowing me to pray drag them to prayer the bible says i will eat in the presence of my enemies let demons hear you pray drag them to prayer but i committed sin if you fell into your secret sin still run to your secret place a revelation that changed me about falling into sin and coming back to prayer was about Adam. When Adam committed sin, God knew it. He watched it full 4K with all of his angels. Slow-mo. Slow motion. Because this was the thing that changed everybody. I mean everybody's lives. You know interesting part is the Bible says the next time that the Lord was meeting with Adam, God didn't cancel the meeting knowing what Adam did. Expecting Adam to show up. Because the question was not, what did you do Adam? The question is, where are you Adam? You know what that means? When you mess up, God's first question is not, how could you? His first question is, where are you? I can't pray, I'm too guilty. God says, prayer is the only place I can fix that. If your sins are like scarlet, come to me and God says let's reason together I will wash you I will clean you I will purify you come to my presence if you've been a prostitute if you maybe wasted yourself cry at my feet I will forgive your sin because the secret place is where secret sin gets dealt with can somebody say amen the log of prayer the second log is the log of fasting fasting deals with our appetites fasting is preparation for temptation many people get amazed how their flesh reacts in the moment of temptation when in reality you shouldn't be amazed you're the one that spoon fed it my dog Jacko has a lot of followers on Instagram by the way a little plug you can follow him he was not properly trained he barks at everybody he sometimes attacks me. Why is it difficult now to control him? Because when he was not trained, now he runs by his animal appetites and urges. That's how the flesh is. Fasting puts flesh in the boot camp of training. You were created to fast because your first meal is called break fast. You're fasting every day. Fasting does not increase my worth, it increases my spiritual weight. Fasting is not only so God can fix my problems, fasting is so God can help me to conquer my flesh. Fasting is for God to restore hunger. People sometimes say, how do you stay hungry for God? If you want to stay on fire for God, you gotta fast. To last, you have to fast. The moment you lose your sharpness, the moment you lose your sensitivity, the moment your spiritual man, you begin to notice you're not connected, you're not hearing anymore. It's a very simple old school strategy. Old school strategy. It's what our grandmas did when they did not have PhDs. 
It's what great people did in prisons when they wouldn't even allow them to finish a middle school. Is they would push the plate aside and they will wait until God speaks. The stomach, king's stomach starts making a lot of noise. But then the king's stomach goes to sleep and the king Jesus begins to speak. And the King Jesus began to speak. I want to challenge you to a fasted life. I don't fast to walk in authority over demons. I fast to walk in authority over Vlad. Because when demons are removed, my biggest threat is not demons anymore. It's me. I can mess everything up. And if this guy does not get self-control, who can control that self? You have to submit that. If I don't live a crucified life, I will live a carnal life by default. I don't want to be a carnal Christian. And there is one solution, biblical solution. Fasting is not cutting off social media. Fasting is not cutting off alcohol. You should not be drinking alcohol anyway. Fasting is not stop sleeping with your boyfriend. That's a sin. Fasting is cutting food out so that you can focus on God. Can somebody say amen? See, it's way easier to come to the front and have somebody lay hands on me to get the fire. To maintain the fire, it requires a little bit of work. Fasting is hard for American culture because we eat for comfort. Most of your Holy Spirit is actually your fridge. We take pride that we don't drink. But we stuff ourselves. And we comfort eat. The other person goes to the club, you run to a fridge. And you get the cookie. You get those chips. Because you have an unhealthy relationship with food. Fasting exposes that right away. First three days, all of those idols go crazy. Fridge starts speaking to you. Starts crying. You have forsaken me. You will never find the comfort of the Holy Spirit until you close the door of your fridge and say, my comfort in stress is the Holy Spirit. Not a Big Mac. Can somebody say amen? The third stick, are you still with me? So we mentioned that the first stick is my prayer. I put it on. The second one is my fasting. It defeats the appetites. Prayer defeats the pride because the reason people don't pray is not because they're busy, it's because they're proud. And I'll prove it to you very simple. Your spouse gets in a car accident, everything changes and you start praying. So it has nothing to do with personality, it all has to do with priority. But most of us only know how to pray when we're pushed by the problems instead of driven by an inner priority. So when we put the log on the fire of prayer, our fire begins to burn. When we put the log of fasting, and by the way, I'll do a little just plug it right now. I have a book on fasting coming out in two weeks. If you can put out the QR code, this wasn't planned, kind of planned, maybe not. And in January, we're doing a 21 day fasting challenge. So I wanna invite you now I'm not talking about the kind of fasting, I'm talking about biblical fasting. Now some of you here are like, man, I've never fasted any time except I had to do my blood work and I had to fast for that day. I want to challenge you to resurrect an ancient, scriptural, biblical, revival secret that New Agers use, Muslims use, Buddhists use, your fitness instructor uses, and there's more videos on the benefits of fasting online than from the fitness instructors than from preachers. Many of you will be healed naturally if you obey the Bible to fast. Your body will get rid of toxins. You will get healed. My dog fasts when my dog gets sick. For three days he doesn't eat and then he recovers on his own. Dogs know how to do that. 
I want to challenge you to fast and let's do it together so we're gonna do it together you can do it we will we'll let you know with which which levels you can do for those of you who have never done a seven day fast or 21 day fast I want to dare you you're like oh I need to build myself up when the Lord led me to a 21 day fast I didn't fast for 10 years more than three days it's not about that it's about conviction Holy Spirit leading you and then you go for it and then about after three days all the stomach and all of the stuff headaches they go away and then you're literally cruising in the spirit realm you lose weight you lose depression you lose so much stuff you lose sicknesses you lose diseases and most important you get closer to Jesus it's incredible you want to last you have to fast the third one is giving now I understand uh, giving might have freaked out somebody yesterday okay just because somebody maybe did it in a way that is not necessarily acceptable by some of us the way we grew up it does not mean that it's not a biblical scriptural component I remember when I was doing a 21 day fast this was right before I was married to my wife in fact I broke up with my wife three weeks before that it was she was not my wife I went one time on her on a date with her and uh, and then I had a problem with my with my mind I couldn't make decisions I would not make decisions and if I would make a decision I would go back and I would constantly have a problem with my mind and so I, I prayed you know I've renounced it everything and so we're doing a 21 day fast so I go into a 20 we go into a 21 day fast and I was a lot skinny I was like Isaiah so yeah Isaiah doesn't eat and it's not because he's fasting he just doesn't eat at all so that's not that doesn't consider fasting okay I'm sorry <laughs> fasting is when you want to eat and you don't eat okay Isaiah just doesn't want to eat at all so that that's that's a spirit we're trying to figure out what spirit that is but <laughs> anyway I'm just kidding so what happens is that sometime in the middle of that fast the Lord begins to lead me uh, at that time I was 24 years of age and I had just enough money to save so that I can have a wedding pay for my future wife's wedding uh, ring uh, vacation uh, all the furniture and I already, I already had a house and I had a new car so I had everything the only thing is I just couldn't find a woman and if I find one I would break up with her because something was wrong like I just always found something so guess what happens uh, I think 11th day of fasting I hear the Spirit of God putting something in my heart it had to be spirit because I would never naturally come to that I'm a, I grew up as a Dave Ramsey disciple say baby steps never give anything above your 10 percent so that was me and I hear this during fasting the Holy Spirit says you have too much money in your savings account I was like the devil is a liar I was like no way God can say that I'm on a pastor's salary they keep him poor so God can keep him humble it literally took me seven years to save that money I denied myself every pleasure of life to save the money so I can find a girl and say even though I'm a pastor I can still provide for you can buy that couch that you want and there is God has the audacity to confront me and I got defensive and the Holy Spirit says why are you defensive I said well because the, it says the Bible doesn't say where your fasting is there is your heart wow. I was like you gotta be kidding me I'm already 11 day in what do you mean this, this this doesn't matter he says it does it just doesn't move your heart I said come on God I'm dying and you're saying this doesn't matter he says I didn't say it doesn't matter this matters because it brought you to the real problem that you have I said I don't have a problem I don't steal I don't lie and I don't cheat on my taxes and I save money I tithe I don't have a problem he says yes you do and he says you're attached to the bank account he says it's funny he says and it doesn't work for you in relationships anyway and I get this thought I thought it was from the devil I, I'll be very honest I thought it was the devil I wrestled it made me sick I almost puked I think I went through my own deliverance didn't puke but I almost puked 
and that was this to take a large sum of money on my savings account that I saved with blood and sweat and to pray for the rest of my fasting days Lord whom shall I bless it's crazy how God answers those prayers a lot faster though all the other ones like God who can bless me like it seems like he puts him like on a back order and the moment you say Lord who I can give a thousand dollars so I would go through the church in my mind and the Lord would put on a heart quickly God speaks just clearly pom 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 and I gave felt so good until I looked at my account and I was like this fasting thing is dangerous for your brain you hear voices you do stupid stuff I really thought this was stupid I finished the fast you know what happened God broke something in my mind three months later I was engaged four months later after that I was married and it's been 12 years now now this is the crazy part my wife has an expensive taste I'm a cheap guy she's the expensive taste she had everything she wanted for the wedding everything was paid by cash I don't know how that happened it's literally it was a miracle now let me tell you the difference between an offering and a sacrifice and for those of you just relax I won't do an offering so just 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 relax because I know I, I, I go for that part and you're like and some of you already put the wall up and, you, you, and you're looking through me through blinds right now you're like nope uh -uh, you're not you're not going there relax I was there where you were a chicken and the pig were walking by and saw a poor farmer so the chicken said let's make him a breakfast I give him an egg you give him bacon well the pig said the problem is for you to give an egg is an offering for me to give bacon is a sacrifice what is a sacrifice it's something that rips your heart from the God of mammon and it's always listen to me always extremely painful and some of you have never given till it hurts so you've never experienced the freedom I'm not pointing I'm not I'm just planting seeds right now because one pastor planted like those in me and then we started to live radically with my wife where almost every year we would spend six years straight emptying our account every January usually during a fast then it led to giving one car away, second car, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. And I can tell you one thing, everything that leaves your hand never leaves your life. And I can tell you another thing, the more stuff leaves your hand, the more your heart gets attached to heaven. To the point I one time was wondering if I'm getting suicidal or if God's gonna take me home because I'm thinking about heaven all the time and I said Lord is this normal I'm like I'm 28 years old and heaven I'm singing about heaven and I was like I've never thought about heaven I never actually kind of I kind of wanted you not to come soon and I said why would I think about heaven the Lord says for the first time in your life you have more there than here yeah where your treasure in that chapter it talks about charitable giving in verses one but treasure is later offering doesn't move your heart I am sorry it doesn't sacrifice rips something in your heart that you bleed I've had times where I had to run to the, to the bathroom <laughs> and I thought I'm gonna puke. I don't know if it's deliverance from mammon or something what it was because when the Lord put something in my heart to do I was like <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I live this. What I'm, what I'm sharing with you I, me and my wife we live this and the reason why some of you are gonna start living this because this is a form of impartation. People say how do you get on fire for God? If you only pray and you only fast but this area you safeguard out of fear of losing I can tell you one thing you will be deprived of supernatural supply you will experience Dave Ramsey blessings but you will not receive your heavenly blessing 
you will pay down your debt in 15 years but you will not experience the breakthrough that God wants you to have so I just want to challenge you first of all those of you in this room who yesterday maybe you made that sacrifice I want to just confirm something though I am not personally in big fan or favor of how it was done but I do believe that the heart of yours that said yes to God God saw that God saw that brokenness something is going to be released in your spiritual journey with God your finances will be blessed later but spiritually something will be released in your spirit and I prophesy that over your life in Jesus name amen so number one we overcome excuses number two is what we do is that we put logs logs are prayer fasting and sacrifice and the last thing and the last thing will not have three sub points so just we're good Daniel you're next the last thing I want you to notice this this will help a lot of people in this room because I am not going to lie to you to say if you build fire you will have revival if you build fire you will have problems snakes will come out <laughs> snakes you always had they were just comfortable with the room temperature have you noticed vipers came out the Bible says because of the heat let me help somebody ever since I got introduced to deliverance hell broke loose is there anybody who had that ever since I started to run after God things just went crazy the pastor said I will be blessed I will get a Mercedes I will get a husband I will get a promotion instead I got vipers left and right biting this biting this and biting that I'm bleeding out so today I'm going to come in from a different perspective and to tell you before you experience the revival on the island you will experience an attack I'm not speaking that into existence that's just the reality why because for the first time in your life you're now running in the same lane with the devil for the first time in your life you are not on his team for the first time in your life the snakes that were hidden and they were biting and they were sucking life out of you do not feel comfortable in your environment because you increase the heat the prayer the fasting the serving the giving the reading the watching the serving is starting to make a python uncomfortable And I know some of you are wondering, well Vlad, that's great. Honestly, well praise God I haven't been building a lot of fire in my life. I don't want that. Yes, you do. This is why. Because if you build a fire, you have a place to drop the snake into. See, you can't drop your python in my pit. I can start the fire a minister can quench a fire they can deliver you from a demon within only your fire shakes off the demon without the demons within come out by exorcism but the demons without come out by building a fire many believers come with snakes and drop them at the altar but the problem is they don't go into the pastor's flame snakes need a flame in your life so yes fire will expose them but it will be that fire that will kill them every time fire exposed a python or a snake in your life I have a word from God that fire is also destined to squash it and to kill it for the glory of God and remember this 
Pythons only attack areas God intends to use. Whose hands was God using few verses down the road to heal the sick? The very hand Python was attacking. I'm delivered. I'm freed. Three days later, <laughs> I'm under the same attack. Not really. Because it's not within anymore. It's without. Pharaoh came back. Yeah. But you don't have to go back. And if you don't go back, he will drown. If you go back and believe the lie that the demons are inside, you will start the process of 10 plagues again. But if you go forward, you will see the salvation of God. If you shake that thing off, if you say, devil, I'm a different person. I'm not your slave anymore. You are not my God anymore. You are not my master anymore. I belong to Jesus. I've been delivered. I am on my way to the promised land. I am going to be used by God. That snake will die. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? When you go home, I want to challenge you to start your prayer life. I want to challenge you to start fasting. I want to challenge you to start faithfully giving. I want to challenge you to start overcoming excuses. Some of you have a battle with the blankets every morning. Beat those blankets before you start fighting Goliaths. Before you start addressing principalities, beat your blanket first. Overcome that first, overcome those excuses. And when the attacks come, Please understand the devil will attack from without in the same area where he used to be within. It's the Pharaoh principle. I want to destroy that argument that if I get delivered, seven demons will come back inside. That is a lie. We have a car outside right now that we came in. And flies don't get in because it's empty. Flies only get in because the, the windows are open. Devils do not come back seven times more because you're empty. Oh, if you're empty, really, first of all, you're not empty. But number two, even if you feel empty, they can't get in. My house is empty back in Tri-Cities. You can't get in because it's empty. Why? Because it's locked. I am sealed by the Holy Ghost. And when I get delivered, devils cannot come back. Why? Because I am protected. Better than Geico protects me. 100%. So the only challenge is this. Do I let this sucker suck blood out of me or do I shake it into my own fire? Or do I go back to Pharaoh and say, yes, yes, I'm so sorry. I'm going to serve you again. Or do I walk forward and Pharaoh dies? If the depression and nightmares you were delivered from, if the suicidal tendencies you were delivered from come back again, this is a Pharaoh trying to scare you back into submission. Listen. Ignore him. Now if he really annoys you, then rebuke him. Do not go back to your old life. Go forward in faith. Shake that thing off. God created you for dominion, not for deliverance. The Bible says he blessed them and said be fruitful and multiply and have deliverance. No, dominion. The gift of righteousness, the abundance of grace that you will reign through life. What does that mean? As I build my fire, some stuff is going to come out. It will attack me. It will hold on to me and that snake will hiss. People, voices will begin to say, he's a murderer. He's a murderer. He's going to die. He's getting, he's, he's getting what is deserved. Oh my gosh, I am not free. Oh my God, I am not free. And the devil begins to lie to you. And you can do this. The more you listen to the voices, the more venom goes into your system. It's funny how when the devil was inside, he never said he was inside. Now he's on the outside. He says he's the inside. That is your first sign he's not inside. If he says he's inside. What does that mean? 
as the snake is hitting the voices are coming in he's a murderer he's a murderer that means that attack will come with the voice and the voice will say I know you got delivered there I know you felt free but this feeling is coming on again you have two choices one choice oh I need deliverance again or oh wrong person you not the same person by the way I I don't know who but out in Jesus name I shake you off in Jesus name turn on some worship music and you shake that thing off amen